Welcome back everyone. Today's task is nothing particularly specific. Um, it's basically to try and add some refinement to this body to get it ready for final sanding. What I mean by that is if we look around the edge where there is going to be full binding, if you look closely you can see that the thickness of the cap is inconsistent all the way around the edge. The reason for that is that I went completely gung-ho with an angle grinder, had loads of fun, made loads of sawdust, but didn't really pay very close attention to that edge, and as such it's ended up a little bit uneven, so that just needs some refinement. In addition to that, we've carved the brake angle into the top after having already carved the body, which means I'm going to have to go back and re-carve the body in the area where that is. I'm also still right up to this point in two minds about actually putting a PRS style cut into the body there. But the first thing I want to address is that binding thickness. So let's crack on. Now it's worth noting that the top of my guitar is entirely a convex shape. If there were any concave elements to it, I would not be able to do what I'm about to do, which is to basically just try and smooth it all out with a flat file like this. Had I have planned ahead a little better, of course, what I could have done was actually put this all on a router table and make a little step in at exactly the same height all the way around, then it would have been much easier to carve to that. As it's turned out on this occasion, I'm having to do it by eye. I do have the option, of course, I could use scrapers. If I'm entirely honest, I just haven't got the knack down yet of trying to get a burr onto a scraper to be able to use them efficiently, and particularly on this very hard maple top. I'm, I'm just not getting any purchase with it, so files it is.
So now that we've got that top sanded back roughly to about 80 grit, it is obviously going to need sanding back further before we go ahead and stain it. Don't worry about these dark spots by the way, that's just alcohol drying off. I couldn't resist giving it a rub down to see what it looked like. Before we go any further with the sanding on the front in preparation for finish, I want to give the back the same treatment. This wench in particular is quite coarse in texture, so it can be difficult to get a smooth finish on it, but I'll do the best I can. Having given that a quick going over, I've realised the back edges could probably still do with a round over. So I'm just going to quickly whip round and do those now. So now that those edges are rounded over nicely and we've pretty much gone over the entire body to something like 80 grit which is very rough but it's just meant that we've got the shape nice and smooth and where we want it. I've also just off camera gone round my F holes and my switch cavities and all those kind of things. Uh, just to make sure any little scraggly bits are dealt with and we're pretty much ready for final sanding. So I ultimately want to end up in about the 320 grit range before we start finishing. So I'm going to start with 120 and then we're going to go up the grits in about two or three stages up to that 320. I'm just going to take my time. The only thing of note really is I'm going to try and avoid using sandpaper that's been used on one type of wood on the other type of wood just because the colour difference is so great the sawdust may discolour the surface on the maple. So time to put some podcasts on and crack on I think. So, not that you'll be able to tell on camera, I have actually already given the body a good going over with all the grits right the way up to 320, and in most places it's looking very good. However, having taken a break, cleaned it up, gone back, come back and looked at it in, in different light, of course I have missed little areas, and that's to be expected. It's always a good idea to take a break, look at it with a fresh pair of eyes in some different light, and you will probably find things. So I'm now gonna go back and work on those problem areas. So 
So that's the sanding pretty much complete as far as I can tell. I've given it a quick wipe down with some alcohol. The main challenge now is to get it nice and clean and ready for finish. The kind of finish that I'm going to be doing actually it shouldn't matter too much if there's a little bit of dust in there because I'm going to be basically smothering, smothering it in epoxy. But we will let that alcohol dry off. I will come in with a vacuum cleaner and clean it up. I will give it a good suck and a good blow. No comments. And then we'll probably wipe it down with alcohol again. And then we shall attempt to cover the back in some epoxy. So the big time is rapidly approaching. We are almost ready for finish. I'm going to be using Zap, two part finishing resin, or epoxy if you like. Having watched other people use it to grain fill and finish guitars, I can see that people do tend to put it on in very, very thin coats. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today. The work area is a little bit colder than is ideal for working with epoxy, so I'm going to stick the shop heater on, which does mean that you're not going to be able to listen to me talk while I work. So just to give you a quick lowdown on the technique, um, I'm basically going to be using scales to accurately measure 50-50 of the two part epoxy. I'll be spreading it on with very, very thinly with a credit card type piece of plastic. And if I need it for the curved surfaces, I do believe I have a foam brush as well. This is the first time I've done this on a guitar and it's the first time I've used epoxy on a curved surface as well. So here's hoping that it turns out all right. This stuff is fairly thick and it doesn't really sort of self level in the same way as casting epoxy. So I don't think we're going to have too much problem with it running. But by the same token, um, when I did do my little sample piece, I think I got a hair in it. And just getting that hair out, the epoxy didn't fully self-level afterwards. So I need to be really careful about just trying to get as best a finish as I possibly can. It will ultimately end up being sanded back and probably having another coat on top of it. Uh, this stuff does blend with previous coats quite well. So yeah, we'll get the heater on, get everything warmed up, and then we're just gonna have to go for it.
So here we are about three hours later and the epoxy does seem to be fully cured. It's not a final finish by any stretch of the imagination but the main purpose of this coat was to function as a kind of grain filler. I would say that it has gone a long way to doing that. It's not perfect, we can still feel some texture under there but it's gone a long way towards doing it. We do have some little dribbles around the edge which are going to need sanded back and the thing that I found the most amusing out of all was we actually had some bubbles coming out of this area of the finish. Now it wasn't because there was air trapped in the finish, it was because the xylem if you like within the wood are that big they actually have air within them so when that air started to expand it started to force its way out from beneath the finish. Most of those bubbles did pop but not all of them and to be honest with you that is the one downside to using this finishing epoxy it's not as good as the casting epoxies at releasing air because it's thicker so even when you get a bit of a heat gun on it it doesn't necessarily release any trapped air so now my task is to sand this back quite far and then we're going to do another coat which I hope will serve to fully seal the thing and then it may require another coat after that to get the final finish let's crack on with the sanding Well, that's sanded back, and I believe we've gone right the way through the wood in some places, but certainly feeling across the grain, it's so much smoother than it, than it was before, even though it's actually not sanded back as fine as it was before applying the epoxy. So I'm guessing that's a good sign. I'm just gonna keep everything crossed that this next coat should look a lot closer to a final finish, I think. I'm going to make more use of these foam brushes around the sides but as before I'm going to have to put the heater on so wish me luck. So we lost a bit of footage there I think but I just applied roughly the same amount of epoxy as before in exactly the same manner as before the only difference was I used a foam brush to get it over the corners and into all the curved bits this time so I didn't have so much chance of things running um, having held it up close to the heat there for a little while and just let it do its thing. There is far less this time in the way of bubbles or anything like that. I can certainly tell that the, the texture of the finish is going to be, it's not going to be perfectly smooth like a leveling epoxy normally would be. It is definitely going to require wet sanding to get it nice and smooth, but we are definitely, definitely heading in the right direction. This coat is looking far better than the first coat. I don't think this is going to be the last coat. Um, it's probably quite likely that I will try and build up another one on top of this one just to give it that extra thickness before I go ahead and start doing the wet sanding etc. But uh, it's looking all right. It's looking all right. So that is the second coat fully cured and hopefully you can see if I tilt it back and forth in the light there it's not perfectly smooth not by a long shot it will just take some sanding to get that nice and level because I'm not too experienced in the old sanding I would probably like at least one more coat of epoxy on there before I go and try and sand back the worst of that otherwise I probably run a bit of a risk of sanding through so even though 
back coat is probably about the right thickness now that we would want for a finish. Definitely going to have at least one more coat on there. Before I do though, let me just draw your attention to this full binding area. Now I know it's normal for the epoxy which I intentionally smeared over that area to make the wood look a little bit darker, perhaps a little bit more antique -y. but looking closely I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera but some of those areas look way darker in comparison to some of the lighter areas on the maple there and I think what's actually happened is we've ended up with some dust contamination when I've brushed it on it's actually got some of that Wenge dust into the epoxy and that's just darkened the finish ever so slightly. I was already contemplating how I was going to go about applying the last coats of finish versus, versus staining the top and I'm thinking that at this stage I'm going to want to sand that back before I do anything else and risk further contamination. If I do it correctly I should hopefully be able to get it so that the maple is exposed while the Wenge remains fully sealed so that we don't have any more issues with that cross contamination. So there we go, I've done the best I can to sand all that back. You probably saw in the footage I actually found it better to use a scraper or a scalpel blade to get the worst of that and then just use sandpaper to finish it. But that has been done. It did occur to me though that if anything goes wrong with the staining process and I need to attack the binding with some sandpaper it might not actually be best to have the sides covered in that epoxy because it's just going to be a bit of a nightmare sanding it all back again. So I think I'm actually going to stop at this stage and consider staining the top and then we will do the final coat all in one go. That seems like a good point to leave it tonight. If you want to watch me stain the thing and put a final coat of epoxy on then uh, join me next time. Goodbye.